Well, good morning, Isaac. It is uh, time to uh, get in the word and to get some coffee. I've got my uh, sea turtle mug from the uh, Covington, Kentucky uh, Aquarium. That's where it came from. So it says so right on the side of it here. So uh, looking forward to digging into Amos some more with you today. How are you this morning? Doing well, doing well. You know, I didn't know that we were going to start like going through all the different types of coffee mugs out there. Like, well, I, I thought, why not? Boring black coffee mugs um, that I work with. So I might have to step up my game, but like show that coffee mug you did. Yeah. It's I mean, the that uh, is a legit coffee mug from the aquarium. Of all from the things. aquarium. Yeah. It gets a, it's a sea turtle. We've got another one I think is an octopus, but I'm it almost sure. looks like it's made out of sea turtle share shell, which I'm sure it's well, not. It's not because that, yeah, that would kind of go against the purpose of the aquarium, but uh, right. <laughs> be that as it may. Um, so we've been talking about when God has had enough, how does he uh, get our attention to turn us back to him? Uh, and in the book of Amos, uh, the prophet Amos, who wasn't looking for a job as a prophet, he was a shepherd, but God gave him this word and he had to deliver it to the people of Israel. And, uh, you know, we've talked about how he roars a warning of judgment. We saw that in the first two chapters. And, and last week, he, he holds his people accountable. He has this standard of, of holiness and righteousness that he uh, empowers us by his spirit to live. Uh, and when we choose not to, there are consequences to that. And, uh, and today we are in uh, chapter five, when we open it up, he's mourning, he's giving a lamentation. Uh, the Lord is mourning over his people because they are going into judgment. Um, and, and it doesn't make God happy to punish sin. Uh, in fact, in Ezekiel, before we get into Amos, let me just read Ezekiel 33, verse 11. It says, as I live, declares the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Israel has a choice to make. They can live. They can experience the fullness of the life God has for them, or they can continue in their wickedness. Uh, and it grieves the heart of God when his people turn away from him and willfully disobey and willfully go the wrong direction. It, it, it doesn't make him happy to punish them. But even in the midst of the discipline and punishment and the calling back, he offers this opportunity for repentance. He cries out, seek me and live. Um, what are your thoughts about the grace of God that just how much he loves us, that he continues to give us opportunities to repent? His desire for us is that we live um, and not just that we breathe air for a couple dozen years on the planet. Like his desire for us is that we live uh, an abundant life uh, that Jesus said, that's why he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. And that's God's desire here. And I love you know, the title of this chapter in Amos in Amos is seek the Lord and live. Um, and that's what, what God's reminding his people here is like, listen, you, you're trying to figure life out on your own. Just come to me. It's the best life that you can have. Um, and so it makes him sad when we don't make that choice. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, in his, it's in his loving grace that he gives us the choice to make it, um, the opportunity to make that choice. And so, um, it, it saddens him when we, when we choose things other than him, but when we do seek him, there's this life, this promised land um, that the Israelites were promised and got a chance to live in. Um, for us, it's an abundant life, an opportunity to live with him and through him today, not just in heaven, um, but that's the life that he wants for us. He's so deeply wants that for us. Um, and there's only one way for us to find it, and that's to seek him. And we're going to get into um, today what seeking him is and is not, um, but that's ultimately what it is. Seek God. Seek God with all you are and live. Amen. That's it. So let's listen to the word of the Lord here. It says, 
Hear this word that I take up over you in lamentation, O house of Israel. Fallen no more to rise is the virgin Israel, forsaken on her land with none to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city that went out a thousand shall have a hundred left, and that which went out a hundred shall have ten left to the house of Israel. For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, seek me and live, but do not seek Bethel. Do not enter into Gilgal or cross over to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into exile, and Bethel shall come to nothing. So this first plea that they seek him and live comes out of a heart that is broken, uh, as we've said, over the fact that they are not repenting. And, and, and the judgment will be severe. Now, the good news is he's promising to preserve a remnant of the people but only 10 out of every 100, only one out of every 10. That means 90% of the people are going to experience the severity of this judgment. It's not and good odds. That's not good odds. Um, and and uh, he's gracious to preserve them, but his desire is that they would all, the, the scripture tells us that he's not willing for any to perish. He would want all to come to repentance. That's his desire. Um, but he knows the heart of men. And so he cries out, seek me and live. Don't seek religion because Bethel and Gilgal were their places of worship, their places of idol worship, their places of empty sacrifice. Um, and so he's saying, seek me, not man-made religion. Every religion of the world other than Christianity says you have to do something to earn God's favor. Christianity says Christ has already done it. Just seek him and live. Have the life that he came to give you. And here we see God pleading for his people to seek him and experience that fullness of life. Seek him, not religion. How have, how have you seen the difference between seeking God and seeking religion in your life? Well, I agree with you that at, at its heart, Christianity offers something different there, right? It's not religion, it's a relationship with God. Um, but that said, there are plenty of Christian churches um, that miss this mark as well. And um, whether it's certain denominations that focus more on the religious aspects than the seeking him aspects, uh, or just individual churches, or just the way that us as humans um, are drawn to coming up with religious things to do to kind of work our ways into into God's um, God's acceptance. You know, sometimes we can, well, oftentimes we as individuals can misinterpret um, the truths that are being that are being shared in, in a Christian church, um, and so you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people looking at the Christian church, especially here in America, and like, oh, you know, what they get caught up in the religious aspects of it, and they've lost the seeking God um, and the truth of the Bible and the truth of God and Jesus. Um, and, you know, you go through a, as you grow up, if you grow up in church at any point in time, anyone that's grown up in church, you kind of have to come to this point of like, hey, what do I believe? what do I believe? Not what did my parents believe, not what was taught to me growing up, but like, what do I truly believe? Um, and I think too often, those of us that go through that process end up just running the religion of Christianity, the religion of whatever church you go through, whether it's Catholicism, Methodist, Lutheran, Baptist, whatever it is, we run the religion part through some sort of sifter and decide whether we like that or not, right? And then that's what we use to determine our feeling on Christianity as a whole. And what God's saying here is like, seek me. Like you said, don't go to these empty places that without me, all of those, all of those Christian religions without God are useless, useless and worthless and off base, right? And so when you're trying to figure out what you feel about Christianity and whether you believe it or not, seek God, seek what you believe on God. And as you discover who God is, the rest will fill in um, and it'll fill in and be Christianity um, as God designed Christianity to be, as Jesus meant it to be. 
and not just focused on the religious aspect. But so many of us get caught up in the religious side of it and not the seeking him part of who God is and who God called us to be specifically. Absolutely true. And, you know, um, it is seeking him. And the Bible makes us so many wonderful promises. It says, if when you seek him, you will find him when you seek him with all of your heart. So when you really desire him more than anything else, you will find him. Uh, he's there. He's waiting. He's available to his people. Seek me and you will live. You will experience this life. Yep. Um, the second thing he says in verses six as, and following is seek me and live. Don't seek your own self-righteousness, not your way, but my way. And because the children of Israel, they'd made up their own rules. They were doing it their way. He says, seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and it devour with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth. They weren't following God's standard. Then he reminds them who God is. He who made the, the Pleiades and Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name, who makes destruction flash forth against the strong so that destruction comes upon the fortress. This is the almighty creator of the universe, the God who put the stars in place, the God who rotates the earth around the sun and spins the earth so that we have day and night and day and night and day and night and has watered the earth with the seas. Um, he put them on the surface of the earth just right. This is the God who is inviting you to seek him. He's the almighty, powerful God who loves you. Um, and yet we try to make our own way. There's a verse in Proverbs 14, 12 that says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Instead of seeking him, we try to come up with our man-made rules, our man-made religion, our own self-righteousness, and it, it, it saddens and sickens God that we refuse to follow his way. Um, and, and the people that in Israel in this time that were ignoring God, they were willfully doing so. They weren't listening to correction. Verse 10 says they hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speak the truth. They wouldn't listen to truth. They had no appetite for it, whatever. They didn't want to be corrected. Uh, they were happy doing it their way. Um, but, but in the process of doing it their way, they were trampling on the poor. They were unfairly taxing the people, um, and, and they were living an evil life and persecuting the poor. And so he says in verse 11, therefore, because you trample on the poor and you exact taxes of grain from him, you've built houses of hewn stone, but you will not dwell in them. You've planted pleasant vineyards for your own comfort and your own ease, but you shall not drink their wine. Um, he's had it. He's finished. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. That was what we need to remember. God knows. He knows everything about us. And he knows everything that we've done, everything we've thought, everything we've said, and yet he still invites us to seek him and live. Yeah, and it's at the core of everything, there is a decision between that we all individually have to make between God and ourselves. Who do you trust more? Who do you depend on more? Mm. Um, and every day, that's what we have to decide. Is it God or is it you? Um, it's, you know, every sin at its core is us choosing ourselves over God, us thinking that we can fulfill a God sized, I, this metaphor, a God sized hole that we can fill it with our own, um, our own actions, our own, uh, pursuit of, um, of good. It's not always that we're pursuing bad. It's just that we're pursuing good our way, our way, um, it goes gotta be to our way. Proverbs 3, 5 tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and do not lean on your own understanding. We think we understand a lot. 
Um, and at the end of the day, it's a, we have a misguided understanding of what we understand. Right. And that's yes. what God calls out here. He did it to Job. He does it all throughout the Bible. He reminds individual humans, I'm God. I'm the God that created everything. I run all of this. I'm God. And you're not. And it's like, you know, if you're not, <laughs> there's two entities that we can misunderstand, God and humans, ourselves. We think that we know a lot more than we do, and we don't understand how much God knows and understands and how mighty and in control that he is. And when we're able to properly align those two entities, God and ourselves, then we can experience his life because we're properly aligned. And we can trust in him and lean on him and acknowledge him in all of our ways, as opposed to just leaning on our own understanding. And you see that that's my personal opinion is that is our biggest problem as humanity is we lean on our own understanding. Um, if you're if you don't believe in God, that's you leaning on your own understanding. But even within the Christian church, for those that that have faith, we go day to day. And there's so many opportunities for us to lean on our own understanding. Um, and and right. it's almost more shame on us because you're plugged into God. You've got God inside of you and you're still leaning on your own understanding. You should know so better, right? This is God's reminder to us of like, seek me. So first of all, seek me, not the rules of religion, right? Seek a right. relationship with God and who he is. But then even in that, seek him and not yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're the biggest threat to your relationship with God is you and the mm. dependence on yourself um, that, that not only is God greater and bigger and more powerful than you, but he even knows you better. Than you. He knows who you are. He knows your strengths and weaknesses. He designed you. Right. You just With are. You. He designed you for a purpose. Um, you weren't involved in the designing of yourself. Um, and so pursue the one that designed you to understand that's the only place you can understand why you were put on this planet why you were created go to the one that created you and ask the question right yeah, um, absolutely and he will show you the that. answer we can't understand that on their own and so in this scenario here in amos god's calling his people back to him he's giving them uh an opportunity to repent and come to him and it's a simple call it's come to me not all these other options that you have out there. There's so many places that when you get scared, when you get threatened, where do you go? And there's, a, you can go to religion. You can go to, um, you know, all the things the world provides for us to, that we think um, help us get to our desires, right? Right. But they're only temporary. And then, but ultimately we run to ourselves. Ultimately right. we run to ourselves, whether it's our ability to self-medicate our desires, it's our ability to accomplish what we want, our ability to make us feel better, to make us feel self-worth, self-confident, self-whatever. Um, the, uh, the current fad in today's world would be all about self. Yep. Right? It's all about self, all about me. Go get yours. Pull yourself up. Like, mm -hmm. that's all about you. You're off the mark. If it's about you, you're off the mark. If it's right. about God, you're on the mark. And so those are really your two options. And you will experience the best possible life following him. I'm not saying it will be easy. I'm not saying it will not be without hardship, but you'll have a capacity to handle it and grow through it because you're seeking him in the midst of the challenges of life. That's when God shows up the most. He doesn't give us the easy path. The road is a narrow road, uh, but it brings life everlasting. Well, he's got one more admonition, and that is he changes it just a little bit. He says, seek good and not evil that you may live. Because when we get so distorted in following man-made religion or just following what the world tells us about ourselves and how awesome we are and what we should be doing for ourselves, then that will eventually lead us to seek evil rather than good. And they had gotten so warped that they were living a luxurious, comfortable life, but they were doing that on the back of the poor and abusing the poor in order um, 
to uh, live a comfortable life themselves. And so he wants the abuse to stop. He wants them to do justice and live a just life. Um, and so he says, hate evil and love good. That's how you do it. You have to hate sin and love God and love good and love righteousness. It's a question of whether you're going to feed your flesh or feed your spirit. Your spirit is seeking the things of God. Your flesh is seeking the things of this world. They are in competition with each other. So he, he first says, seek good, not evil. And then the way you do that, he said in verse 15, is to hate evil and love good. So we need to be hating sin more and more and loving God and loving good, the good that he has more and more. That's his plan for us. Well, and, and not to be overly simplistic, but God is good and we are evil. Like, yeah, that's so based on what we were just talking about, seeking God, like you can't when you're focused on yourself and doing what you want, like you, you have evil desires in you as a human. Yeah, that's who you are. That's who you and are. James not, describes them perfectly. Yes, we're not good. Like, no, and, and that the world tells us the exact God. opposite. That we're exactly. all basically good and we're all basically good. Do 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 what you want to. That's good. Be you. Like no, go chase after God. And God designed you specifically. Like God has you in mind. He designed you for a purpose. Um, but also, like when you're the one calling the the shots, you're going away from God. And so it's a, allow God to show you who He designed you to be, and allow Him to work that through you. It's all him. It's not you. Um, and so it's like, you can, I always thought a good motivational speech would be like, hey, listen, you can be whatever you want to be. You were designed to be something specific. You can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. Step one, realize you can't do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's like, right. It's at, like God has designed you and God will take you wherever he has called you to do it. And it'll blow your mind. It will blow your mind where he, what he wants to do with you um, that you can't even imagine the plans he has. For you. I'm li I'm living I'm living that truth. You and me both. Yeah. You and me both. We and we can't imagine it. And there's other things that'll come in the upcoming days that we can't even wrap our heads around right now, right? But I it's not it. not because you and I go out and accomplish it. It's not. Um, no. We're just faithfully showing up and asking him to guide us. Exactly. And so, but the, the, the proper understanding of who we are in this equation, um, that God is good. And then when he talks about evil, like we have that in us, that's not just our enemies. It's not just, you know, the people no. on the other side of the aisle, like it's like the biggest threat to us, the biggest evil that we deal with every day is our own. Um, right. Okay, we bring Nine that to the, the table. So, yep. Yep. Um, and yep. so there's a lot of things that you can get tied up in this world. And I think I, I'm going to make a sweeping statement here, but I think everything that's not pursuing God is tied to an evil. Like right. if it doesn't have God at its core, if it's not pursuing him and who he is, then what's left is man-made and is evil. It's and tied it's pulling, to an evil, whether you recognize it or you not. away from God, yeah, because it's moving in the opposite direction. Well, as he wraps up this chapter, he, he reminds them again that he is judging them, and because he says in verse 21, I hate, I despise your feast. Your religion is empty to me. It has no value whatsoever. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're very faithful to bring me your offerings, but not out of a heart that loves me or wants to seek me, you're just doing it out of obligation. And you think you're buying me off, but you're not. I, I detest it. Uh, he said, take verse 23, take away from me the noise of your songs, the melody of your harps. I will not listen to it. Uh, their inward focused self-made worship is detestable to him. What he wants is to see their outward serving of other people. Verse 24, these are famous words from the book of Amos, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. He wants them to be just. 
in their actions and in their lives with other people. It should be just as natural as water flowing downhill that they are taking care of the needs of people and they're putting other people ahead of their own desires. That's justice and, and mercy. And that's what he's looking for. Um, but, but instead they're worshiping idols. They were making idols in the desert when they were wandering in the wilderness out of God's judgment Verses 25 and 26 talk about the fact that they were making idols to worship the stars and the sun um, during that time. Uh, again, self-made worship. Because of that, he's sending them into exile. Because of that, the God of hosts, the Lord of the universe, is judging them. It's a sad tale, but the opportunity is there. Seek me and you will live. We always have that choice. He's waiting for us to come back to him. It's a promise. It's a it promise. Is. Seek him, you will find him, and you will live. And you will right. live beyond your wildest imaginations. Now, does that mean that you live in a freaking mansion and make 18 figures a year? No, it's his definition of good and his definition of abundant, and it's better. It's better than whatever we think that right. good life is. You will live a life of joy and peace and love, and you'll make a difference in the world. You'll live a life of significance because you're living for him. Uh, and he, he, again, he will bless you beyond what you can imagine. So seek me and live. That's the message this week. And I hope it's been an encouragement to you. And if you have questions about this, uh, or you're, you've been looking for answers, seek him and live. And if we can help you do that, we'd be happy to, but thanks for listening. See you next week. All right.